Hello, this is Jay Camera here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Batman Arkham Asylum Series 2 action figure from DC Collectibles, or DC Direct as it used to be called, Victor Zaz, or Mr. Zaz. So usually I have it with the box, but this time I didn't. But don't worry, I'll show you pictures of what he would usually look like otherwise. So inside would be this, which would be on the back, like the background. Which has like the game's font with the moon and the night sky raining, Gotham City in the background and bits of Arkham Island up front. You can open it up to see more advertisements of other products that DC Direct made then. And on the back has the collection for each figure you can collect. This is the version from Series 1, but you, you get the idea. And the description is as follows. It's a madhouse, and the lunatics are running the asylum. After arriving on Arkham Island, Batman is greeted by Warden Sharp and security personnel. Although the Joker is securely strapped to a handcuff for transfer to the deepest bowels of Arkham, he escapes nonetheless. This is going to be the worst night of Batman's life. With the Joker free, inciting unrest amongst the inmates, Batman faces a riot from a cadre of Gotham City's most wanted, killers and psychopaths, were screaming for vengeance and out for blood. Batman's blood? His mission? Stop the Joker and his accomplices at all costs. Welcome to the Asylum. Arkham Asylum. So, the figures in this lineup include Armored Batman, Poison Ivy, Zaz, and Bane. I already have Poison Ivy. And I'm doing Zaz now. Hopefully I'll get around to these two figures eventually. So, from my understanding, this figure sold the least out of the figures from both Series 1 and 2. And I can get why. Because to Batman fans who haven't read the comics or played the game and are like, maybe even new... They probably won't know who Zaz is. If you've read, like, big into comics and have read them, and if you've played the game, you'll know who Victor Zaz is. He's a nihilistic serial killer who tattoos the amount of people he's killed onto his body with a knife. But to otherwise, he looks like just some generic thug. Now I'll open him up and we'll have a closer look. So here is Zaz out of the box with everything he has. So, of course, like each of these figures, we have a stand with one peg. Pretty much all of them, from what I've noticed, seem to be for right foot. And it fits along very nicely and stands well with it. However, without it, just like many of these figures, it's difficult to make him stand, which seems to be a common issue with these. They kind of need it. And on the subject of complaints, the knives seem to have trouble getting in. It's impossible without... Two hands, I swear. On the positives, though, the articulation is very well done. The wrists can articulate. The legs articulate. Legs articulate, they can go that way. The arms and shoulders can rotate, so it's like he's slicing people up. The only place that doesn't have good articulation is the head. Like, they really dropped the ball there. 
you can maybe move it a little bit, and it could just be mine, but it's not impressive on the head. And the shoulders can't really move up and down. Well, they can't go and forth. And as for the paint, it's well done. You can see the calves very well. You can see all of these marks, even if the camera really has a vendetta against me. And all the chains on him is really good. S signalizing that he's very dangerous. The tattoos on the back are well done. The questionable design choice of a character, but it is at least accurate to the game, so I guess I can give him that. Even the knives are very well done. Not much else to say, because Zaz has a very simplistic design. But simplicity isn't bad, as long as it's done well. And I think Zaz does pull it off greatly. Another detail I just noticed is that the pants are actually a little red. And if you rotate the legs, they can actually rotate rotate with it, you see? Which is really nice attention to detail. And like, if you look at the teeth, it's really remarkably well done. Very dirty. Shows a lot of history to this character, and I love it. I honestly don't have much to say outside of that for the character. I think I've said everything, because Victor Zaz in media is not that common to find. Like, I wouldn't call him a forgotten or obscure Batman villain, but he's not really up there with villains like Joker or Penguin or Two-Face or Riddler and all that. But I like Zaz, and for my recommendation, if you're a fan of this character, this is a must-have, because... I believe this was his first ever action figure. And I don't really know if he's had any others. Like, I cannot think of any. So, if you want any merchandise of the character, this is also a good one to get. I would like to see one with, like, his first appearance when he had blonde hair and, like, the sort of Steamboat Willie styled eyes with, like, the inverted colours. I'd like to see that version of Zaz made into an action figure. It might be already, but I don't know about its existence as of making this video. If anybody wanted to know his size side by side, it's not even close. He is shorter than each of the other characters, at least in my collection so far even shorter than Scarecrow. In the game files, it says he's supposed to be 5'8", and so is Ivy, and look at the difference. It's because he's bending his legs, but I don't know if he would, would really be that much taller if he was. So there you have it. That concludes the video. His final score is 8.3 out of 10. So there you have it. That concludes this review. I hope... Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.